in a time for some yoga Pilates fusion. <laughs> Potentially some interference from small furry creatures. We'll see how this goes. <laughs> so we're going to start today uh, with a little elevation in the chest. This is one of my favorite ways to start class. Um, if you have a blanket, you can certainly use that. That's what I'm going to do today. But you can also use a couple of blocks or a pillow. You just need to get a little bit, and again, you can also start just lying down. The reason for this is that if you, you know, <laughs> you curl up at night, and it's these secondary breathing muscles that live, uh, the pectoralis minor, um, and then, you know, the shoulder can move forward, and then the rib cage gets a little compressed so the ribs don't expand as much. If that's the case, then you don't have as much access to like, you know, flexibility, muscle movement there in that area. So this helps open up that space. So if you're up for it, you can take a blanket and roll it up or fold it up so that you have a nice long um, support structure under your back. If this is one of your favorite things, by the way, they make yoga prop just for this. It's called the Pranayama Bolster. Um, I can spell that for you later if you want me to, but uh, it actually is a pillow that's this long and about this wide and about that thick that's exactly for this purpose. Now, most people are not going to have one of those, so a folded blanket will do a nice job. But you can also put other things under there. Just make sure that when you are uh, lying down on whatever object you've chosen, it doesn't, it's not poking you really uncomfortably in the spine. So like if I use, when I use yoga blocks, I want my shoulder blades on the block because that kind of distributes the body weight across the block. Um, when I use a blanket, it's a little more forgiving. So whichever version you're gonna do. And then the legs can be a couple of different ways. So once you've positioned yourself over the blanket or whatever it is you're using, oh, snuggle your shoulder blades in a little so that we can get this little opening around the chest and then you can do constructive rest with your feet in that position or you can straighten the legs all the way out. This turns a little more fishy um, I mean, by that I mean fish pose like, where it sort of elevates the ribs a bit more. So if you like that sense of a back bend, um, this is a little interesting way to go. And then somewhere in the middle is the butterfly shape. So you put the feet together and drop the knees open. Um, and that's a little spicy for the inner thighs. So you can pick which one of those you like the best. <laughs> um, and then we're just gonna pause for a few moments and breathe. And we're trying to get some movement in the rib cage. We're trying to let this arm bone kind of drop back. So the pectoralis minor muscle connects the ribs through the arm joint to the shoulder blade. And it makes, <laughs> it's, a, it's a secondary breathing muscle and it helps lift the ribs um, from this area when we want to take a really deep breath. So we're letting the arm bone kind of drop back into the shoulder blade to create a little bit of space there. And so as time goes on, if some things shift, you might wind up adjusting your shoulder blades again. Now, if you're using a blanket and it would be helpful, you can fold it a little bit so that you can give yourself a slightly elevated head position. For some of us, a little bit higher in the head it feels nicer when you're laying on the floor. Just make sure it doesn't alter too much the jaw so you can still relax your face.
take about two more deep breaths. and take out whatever's under you and then come on back and this is the part that I like the most which is sort of noticing if a difference has occurred and generally speaking I like the way it feels so there's kind of an impression left behind I feel the sense that my arm my shoulder has kind of rolled backwards a little bit instead of rolling forward more permanently <laughs> it feels nice feels good to stretch, oh, I have to do a little movement, you can do little windshield wipers with your legs if you like. Now we're going to do a couple of little movements for the shoulder, so just make sure you can reach all the way over your head. Now if your range of motion is limited and your body wants to stop right there, that's fine. You can stop wherever your range of motion stops, okay? Um, <laughs> just wherever that is, make sure you're not going to smack any furniture. So we're going to take the arms and kind of point them, point the palms towards the thighs. So the pinky fingers are down and the thumbs are pointing up and then reach down almost like you're going to try to grab your ankles. And then as you move the arms up through a range of motion, you're going to keep stretching through the arms all the way until you reach as far as you can go overhead, maybe all the way till the thumbs touch the ground and then keep going, reach all the way back through this range of motion. So stretching out, reaching up and through the range of motion. And this one has, depending on how long your arms are, this can be quite a lot of leverage. So you might be really feeling your triceps kick on right there, and then the biceps kick on to kind of slow the descent. And as the arms move again overhead for the last time, you might feel, oh, that resistance to try to help sustain the slow movement. I think it's kind of fun. All right. Now we're going to bring the arms straight up and then grab hold of the elbows. Now, when you did that, one arm wound up closer to your face than the other. So for me, that's my left arm. So I'm going to grab hold of my left arm with my right arm in a moment. But it's whatever arm is closer to you that's going to be the arm that you're going to work with. So first we're just going to push the elbows away, see if you can bring the arms all the way overhead, bring the elbows back all the way to the chest. Now this is a little less leverage, and so notice the difference in the way it feels to move the arms through this range of motion. Now when we come back to the point where it feels like you've got a little bit of room, you're going to take hold of your upper arm the one that's closest to you with the opposite arm, and then pull away from you. So I'm taking my left arm to the right, and then I'm going to let my left shoulder blade get as heavy as I can. So there's a little resistance happening there. Now I'm going to continue um, with this left arm. So I'm going to roll to my right side. I'm going to reach this left arm out and again I just have to make sure I have enough room for the first round that I'm not going to smack any furniture. Now I like a little head support so I put my blanket under there for a block but you can just let your head rest on the floor if that works for you. So we're going to take that arm reach it up and over in a big half circle. Now right in this area um, there's a lot of nerves in the shoulder that can get a little pinchy so just get softer as you come back around. Okay, so we're going to come all the way over, right almost to the point where the arms are parallel, and then come right back around. And do that one more time. So then once we get here, we're going to come back to the center. grab the elbows now putting the other arm in front and so now we've got the elbows there right about I don't know <laughs> like right about shoulder height we're gonna oh lift the arms up overhead stretching up and away 
and then keep stretching through your arms like you're trying to touch the ceiling with your elbows all the way back to your chest. So lifting, coming up and over. And then come and back. And then one more time, lifting, coming up and over. And coming back, and then we're gonna grab that upper arm and pull it across. And again, I'm trying to, this shoulder blade, I want to get back to the floor, so I'm trying to let that get super heavy against the resistance of me pulling on my arm. Last breath there. And then I'm just gonna go right over to the other side. Double check my range of motion isn't gonna get interfered with. Okay, and then we're gonna do the same thing. So reaching through the arm, stretching a nice big semicircle there, a little rainbow over your head, and then coming back. Again, working with the range of motion that's appropriate. Two more. bringing yourself back to the center. Just for a moment, allow your arms to rest on the floor and then just see what happened to your shoulder girdle. Does it feel interesting? <laughs> it might have been things that felt interesting while we were doing that, but almost always I feel kind of a nice pleasant warmth um, and a sense that my shoulders are a little closer to being put back on my back the way they're supposed to be by nature. <laughs> All right, yogis, let's take a hold of the right leg. So you can leave your left leg in this constructive rest position, or you can let the left leg rest out in a straight line. Hug it onto that right leg, spin your foot in circles. And then eventually switch the circle the other direction. And then you're gonna point and flex the foot. You can spread out the ball of the foot over the other. All right. So now once you've gotten your foot flexed back, we're gonna press up through the heel and you're just gonna see how straight you can make your leg and then bend the knee and hug the leg in, and then you can let go of it if you need to. <laughs> Stretch the leg out, see where it lets you go. Hug it in, and then one more time, we're gonna stretch it up. All right, so there we're gonna pause, and you can point the toe, or you can work through the ball of the foot, almost like you're wearing an imaginary four-inch heel, or you can press up through your heel. Depends on how it feels in your leg, right? Because each of those positions, for me, is different. I'm gonna put your hands behind your head. Now we're gonna bring this left elbow up towards that right pinky toe, and then come on back down. That's the move. So we're gonna try to reach through that foot and bring that elbow up. Exhale on the curl, come on back on your inhale. We're gonna do four more of these. If you want, you can hover that left leg, make it a little more challenging. Try to keep your neck relaxed and do the work one more time from the obliques. Good, now bringing the head back down, planting the hands nice and firm, we're gonna take the leg across the body and then sweep a circle out and around. Ideally, we're not moving the pelvis or the ribs at all. So we're hugging in nice and steady so that as that circle is made, no movement happens here, and all this resistance is help making it harder to hold that steady. So one more like that, then when you get to the top, you're gonna take the leg out to the side, come to the point where the legs come together, and then straight up the middle if you can. So right there, hold steady through that hip, draw the sides of your waist in, 
and two more of those. I like to do them really slow because they <laughs> it provides a lot of resistance um, to do it that way. Now, we're going to bring the uh, right knee in and the left leg up, and you can curl your shoulder blades up off the floor if you like. You can hold on to the back of your head, or you can reach your arms out this way. Now, if your neck is overused, this is useful because it lets you press your head into your hands and then really work with your abdominals to keep the curl here in the spine, all right? So curling in, switching legs, curling in. And again, we're trying to curl oh, from the abs. It's not easy to talk and do it at the same time. So let's carry on. One more set. All right, coming back down now. You can put both legs down for a moment. Maybe windshield wiper a little bit if that feels nice. And then you'll decide if your right leg's gonna stay with this constructive rest or if you're gonna let that go out long. Grab hold of your left leg and then spin your foot Ooh, in circles. the opposite direction after a bit. And then point and flex. So we're going to flex the foot, we're going to reach up through the heel, and again, however straight it goes, or you can let go of your leg, curl it in, stretch through the heel, curl it in, stretch through the heel, we're going to do that one more time. So now once we get the leg all the way extended, we're going to let go, and that guy's going to stay there, again, reaching through one of those points, either reaching through your pointed toe, reaching through the ball of your foot, reaching up through your heel. We want to keep that sense of lengthening through the leg as best you can. Then we're going to curl up and come on back. So we're holding the pelvis steady with this reaching and working the obliques to get the twist. Try to keep your neck pressing into your hands. You want to hover your leg, you can hover your right leg. Four more. Last one. And then you're going to rest the arms. We're going to take this leg across, and then you're going to sweep a circle out and around. So across, out and around out and around <laughs> within a range of motion that doesn't run into your own furnishings. <laughs> okay, there we go. All right, do one more like that. Again, hug in through the sides of your waist. When you get all the way up to the top, we're going to pause there, go out to the side, bring the legs together, come straight up the middle. One more of those. When you get to the center, we're going to bring the knees in. You're going to hover the shoulder blades as high up off the mat as you can keep them. Curl the knees in. You can curl up like a ball 
and extend both the arms of the legs and then curl in, the object of the game is to keep the torso completely stable the whole time. You can bring the hands behind the head if you tend to overdo it with the neck and either just extend the legs or use that as kind of a stable place to get started and relax the neck muscles. So the torso is stabilizing and then we're using the limbs to create the challenge to keep all of that stable. Low back, shoulders, everything. Two more of those. And then bring your feet to the ground, bring your net head to the ground, and rinse out any little tension <laughs> or anything that might have developed in your hip flexors there with a little windshield wipers. All right, yogis, we're gonna do one more move here. Speaking of hip flexors, <laughs> so we're gonna do uh, the leg lowers, which some of you don't like. I love, <laughs> I think it's fun. But in any case, um, you have three different positions with your upper body. So you can curl the shoulder blades up off the mat, pressing the hands back into your head and holding that stable uh, position you can leave the head on the floor and position the arms either on the sides or slightly underneath your hips with your elbows a little bit bent. So the object here is to keep the torso nice and stable and particularly the low back, which has a tendency to arch if we've got tight hip flexors as we're lowering down. So we wanna hold the pelvis nice and neutral, keeping the low back steady. You're not trying to eliminate your low back curve. That's not necessarily good for your sacrum or your spine, but we want to hold it nice and stable, okay? So choosing the arm position that's going to best, <laughs> best position you for that, we're going to bring the legs straight up, glue the heels together. Again, it does not matter how low you lower your legs. What matters is that you can maintain the stability of that lever that the legs are going to create. So we're lowering down for four, three, two, one, holding there and drawing in through the sides of the waist. Three, two, one, and then bringing it back, okay? Lower in four, three, two, one. Reach through the legs and hug in. Three, two, one, come on back. Lower four, three, two, one, hug in. Three, two, one, coming back. Four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one, come back. We got two more to go. Four, three, two, one, hug. Four, three, two, one, come back. Ooh, last one. Four, three, two, one, draw that navel back. Three, two, one, bring it back. All right, let it go. <laughs> and then give yourself a little, like a little reward, a back massage, a happy baby, some windshield wipers, whatever it might be. Oh, it feels good, yogis. All right, we're going to essentially just flip ourselves over like you would flip a little pancake. So you can scooch a bit over to one side so that when you flip yourself over, you're closer to the center of your mat. And then we're gonna take a moment, <laughs> get things I can breathe off my mat. Um, okay, so we're gonna take a moment with the hands spread out a little on the high side. So higher than the shoulder line, reach back through the legs, press them down into the floor, use the back muscles to lift yourself into Cobra, and then plant the hands and pull the collarbones wide. So we're gonna do three in this position, one, Inhale, lift, exhale, come down, that's two. And then one more. Good, slide your hands back so that they line up more with the chest muscles. Still spreading the fingers out. Lift, now pull the collarbones wide again. Come on back down, two more. Inhale, lift, exhale, return. And one more time, inhale, lift, use your glutes. <laughs> exhale, come down. And then last time, we're gonna slide the hands almost to the bottom of the rib cage. Doesn't have to be quite that far. And then 
press the legs down, lift, pull the collarbones wide, coming back down, inhale, lift. Coming down one more time, press the legs into the ground, lift, beautiful. Now we're gonna slide the elbows underneath us so that we're holding ourselves up here. Keep a little bit of a lift, so for me to do that best, I, the elbow needs to be a little bit forward of the shoulder and slightly closer together. Then you're gonna drop your chin so that it kind of touches the breastbone or gets pretty close. And then just sort of drawing a line over the collarbone with your chin. You're gonna bring your chin up over one shoulder. You might be able to spy your little toes back there if you look. Bring the chin back to the center, up over the other side, and maybe you can spy your little toes back there. So keep pressing the legs into the ground, and then one shoulder and then the other with the neck. to the middle, we're going to pause there, now, we've got one more little thing in our um, repertoire, I'm going to show you this now, I guess we're going to come back to it each round, so you're going to take your arms out kind of wide and come up onto the tips of the fingers, now you can point the fingertips out or forward, whichever you think is going to work best, I like both, then we're going to lift ourselves up for this cobra, and then take the right shoulder blade forward and out and the left shoulder blade down and in. I look to the left and then opposite side. Left shoulder blade goes forward and out. Right shoulder blade goes down and in. Look to your right, okay? Let's do that twice more. Getting the shoulder blade sliding into place. And one more on this side. And one more on this side. Okay, so we're going to do that in between rounds. Come on back down. We're going to either go to child's pose or you can go to more of an all fours position if that's better. Give yourself a little wobble. Now, if down dog is not your jam and for whatever reason having your head in that downward position is problematic, then from here, you can either go to a standing forward bend or you can do a down dog against a piece of furniture or a wall. Um, if down dog is a cool pose <laughs> for you, then that's the pose we're gonna do. So take yourself to one of those options. Once you get there, take a moment to play with the shoulder girdle. Try the hands in different pointing positions. Find the one that you like best. And ideally your shoulders just feel like they're in neutral in your upper back. And then we're gonna oh, tread through the heels and get a little into the calves, the hamstrings, and the glutes, potentially. Now, oh, stretch back if you can. Really pull the hips back away from your wrists. And then we're gonna take a little walk so that the feet and the hands wind up together. Come up halfway. Exhale, bend your knees fold. You can even take that into more of a squat if you like. And then straighter legs coming up halfway. Bend the knees fold. Release any tension from the back of your neck. And then one more time coming up halfway. And then all the way to standing. Give yourself a nice big stretch when you get here. All right, yogis, so we're gonna take a position at the top of the mat. <clears throat> Give yourself a moment to sort of get, you know, whatever, wardrobe malfunctions, hair arranged. Just from here we're going to do a little flow. Okay. And then find your mountain pose. So mountain pose is a nice sort of touchstone pose. It's sort of to me the way downward dog is a touchstone, and even shavasana, <laughs> where you just lay on your back is a touchstone, so that we have something we can kind of compare. So turn your feet forward, hips distance apart, let the knees get a little soft, a little bit of um, forgiveness in the hip. 
and then spine nice and tall so you can feel your abs doing a little bit of help and then let your shoulders relax. And so finding that position where it feels like you're balanced over your feet and there's even weight right to left, front to back. See where that lands you. And taking one more breath here. So we're gonna shift the weight to the right side. So that immediately changes things. We're gonna bring this left leg into some kind of a balancing pose. I'm gonna do a tree, but you can do any balancing pose that works for you. tree pose just make sure you're not pushing against your knee joint just below the knee or above it is good knee joints don't appreciate abuse <laughs> taking two more breaths if we can all right so then we're gonna pick this leg up and try to step back into a high lunge so the high lunge means I'm balanced on my toes in the back my front knee is over my ankle or a little behind it and the hips are pointing forward it might also be a little bit wobbly. So you can hold onto your hips, one hand on your thigh, or you can bring the arms up. Now, we're gonna bend this back knee some amount. Some people can get really close to the ground. I cannot, I have very tight quads. But this allows me to lift the pelvis up. So you're gonna bend the knee, keep the pelvis nice and lifted. Then we're gonna press that heel back and push the knee forward a little bit, okay? Bend the knee, see what kind of work the quads are willing to do. Straighten that leg back out, pressing forward through your front knee. Okay, and then one more time, bending that back knee, and then pressing, <laughs> pressing back through your heel, stretching the balance as needed. So we're gonna take this pose and launch ourselves into a warrior three. You can reach the arms back, you can reach the arms up, you wanna hold on to a piece of furniture, cool. So we're gonna take that leg and try to just lift it up, and hold steady as best you can. See if you can keep your hips nice and level. <laughs> Catch yourself as you start to get wobbly. So that right leg has done a lot of work. We're almost done. Take one more breath. And then we're gonna step all the way back in into down dog. Again, you can sub out down dog here for an all fours position. All right, so noticing the difference between the right and the left come forward into a plank, you can hold a full plank, modify that plank, or uh, modify it the other direction. <laughs> Just hold it. Navel in, tailbone and navel curling towards each other. Keep a lift in your shoulders, last breath. And then we're gonna lower down. Come into Cobra, you could do an up dog if you want to, and then just come back. And then we're gonna take the hands out wide, lift into that Cobra. Right shoulder forward, left shoulder back. Left shoulder forward, right shoulder back. Right shoulder forward, left one back. Oh, <laughs> you get the idea. One more time. All right, we're gonna come on back down. We're gonna push ourselves back up and into down dog or all fours. We're gonna take that right leg up Come straight down the middle and curl it in. Inhale, reach it back. Come across towards your left elbow. Reach it back. Come to your right upper arm. Reach it back, hold here, stretch through both legs, and then step it forward however far it goes. Put your weight in your feet. Step the left one forward. Come up halfway. Exhale, fold, and come all the way to standing. Give yourself a nice big stretch. And then we're gonna find that mountain pose again. And we just did a bunch of stuff on our right side. Can you feel the difference in your mountain pose? So then we're gonna shift the weight into the left leg and bring that right leg into whatever balancing pose you chose last time.
recovering through the wobbles. <laughs> Two more breaths. Okay, we're gonna pick up this leg and we're gonna step back into our high lunge. <laughs> Finding the balance. Okay, once you're there, you're gonna bend that back knee, keep your pelvis lifted, and then come back to a straighter leg. Push your front knee forward. So bending the back knee, and then coming back to a straighter leg. Press back through your heel if you can. One more time, bend in that back knee. Push it straighter, and then we're gonna try. We're gonna try for our warrior three. Ooh, maybe using some furnishings or some blocks <laughs> on this side, or on both sides, who knows? Or maybe balancing nicely. Try to get your pelvis nice and level. Work with it. <laughs> Couple more breaths. Good, last one. Oh, and then we're gonna step ourselves back and into down dog. Oh, that feels so nice. <laughs> Feel the difference between last one and this one. All right, so we're coming forward into plank. And again, you can hold that plank as you see fit. Just do it so that you've got some integrity <laughs> in, in your abdominals, if not everywhere else. Cool, last breath. And then lower down. You can come into whichever version you like of a back bend. And then just bring yourself back down once again taking the arms out wide lift it into a cobra left shoulder forward right shoulder back right shoulder forward left shoulder back oh, snuggle them into the center there switch sides. switch sides. Oh, feels good <laughs> one more time All right, yogis. Now we're gonna pick up our right leg and bring ourselves all the way around. So we're gonna switch positions. <laughs> you may have to bring your screen with you or change once we get there. So right knee is bent, put that right foot on the floor and then sit up to it. Now we're gonna drop this right leg open so that you're sitting facing your left leg. So if you need to make a few adjustments to that, and then we're gonna sit up nice and tall and twist towards the right leg. Now at this point, if you want, you can bring that knee back up, but you don't have to, you can keep the open shape. Turn this left leg on so the toes point up and the knee is slightly bent. And then breathe. Notice the shoulders give the shoulders just a little bit of that action that we did earlier one shoulder in one shoulder out to create that little extra bit of hmm, <laughs> shoulder goodness and taking one more breath here now we're gonna side bend out over this left leg so you can stay where you are if you like you can open it up a little bigger Side bend up and over. Now the latissimus dorsi muscle runs from the bottom here, really kind of tucked in near our spine, comes up like a fan towards the shoulder. So we're gonna try to get into that muscle a little bit. So we're gonna rotate the arm bone so that it goes as close, the elbow comes in towards the face Pinky goes closer to the left side, and then we're gonna stretch through that part of the body. See if you can feel that. Rotating the arm in somewhere to help you get there. Taking one more big breath. And we'll come back out of here. We're gonna turn this into a boat pose. So you can bring the right knee up, bring the left knee in. If you would like to do some fancier things, you can throw a teaser in here, or you can join me for a boat pose, sort of holding steady for a moment. 
keep your heart lifted. We're going to try bringing the knees into the elbows for a little pulse. Five, four, three, two, one. Now reach it down to grab hold of your feet. You can either hold the ankle, you can hold on to your big toes, or you can hold on to the sides of your feet, whichever you think is going to give you <laughs> the best opportunity to straighten the legs and hold that boat pose steady. Lift your heart, don't let yourself get roly poly if you can help it. <laughs> And if you're still teasering, just hang on with your teaser. Keep going. One more round. Oh. And we're going to bring the legs back together. Stretch them out. Oh, roll onto our right side and come all the way down. So we're going to stack the hips, stack the shoulders. If your legs move slightly forward, a little more support legs lined up a little more challenging legs a little bit lifted <laughs> a little bit more challenging all right so we're going to bring the heels behind us and the um, feet up so normally i would rest my thigh on the floor here again you can slightly elevate but you're going to have to do a lot more work with your abs so choose appropriately we're going to try to maintain a nice steady support through the torso by hugging in the sides of the waist the knees are going to open. You're either going to just hold that there and then close the knee, or you're going to open it, extend that leg all the way straight, bring the toes back together, bring the knees back together. So whichever one is going to not torture your knee, but give you the resistance that you need to build strength in this hip. Got two more to go. Okay, now once we get to the end of that, we're going to extend the legs out. You're going to take that top leg and bring it forward in some fashion. It can be straight, it can be bent. You're going to make sure your hips are over top of each other, lift your bottom leg. We're going to pulse that bottom leg up for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5 four, three, two, one. Hold it steady now for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Now bringing that leg down, we're gonna roll back onto the belly. We're either going back to down dog or we're going back to an all fours position, whichever one you did last time. We're gonna bring that left leg up it's coming straight up the middle, curling in. Stretch it back. We're going across towards that right elbow. Stretch it back, coming out towards the left elbow. Stretch it back, sink into your heel, reach through that leg. And now this time, rather than stepping forward, we're just going to put it back to down dog. Come back onto the belly. Do a cobra. Arms out nice and wide lift last time here one shoulder forward one back come back to the center opposite side back to the center last round here and then we're going to come down lift your left leg and bring yourself all the way around to the left coming into a seated position if you know you want to leave your knee up for the twist, you can leave it like that. I'm just going to drop it because it puts me in position for the next pose. So, this leg is active, toes pointing up, knee a little bent. We're facing that way and then rotating the torso around. Getting nice and tall and elegant. And breathing.
one more breath here. We're going to come back into a side bend. So we're going to take whichever version of the side bend you did last time. Taking the left side over toward the right. Again, you can kind of play with the alignment. And then if you liked that latissimus stretch, we're going to cut, rotate the arm bone in and really try to find that stretch that goes from your waist up to the shoulder. One more big breath. And come on back. One more time with a boat pose. Oh. Hopefully you feel like you've gotten enough boat. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Grab hold of your ankles or your thighs or whatever you can get hold of. Straight legs or bent. We're going to rock back. Oh, rock up. Rock back. Rock up. Rock back. Rock up. Catch that balance, rock back one more time, rock up, Whew. and then we're going to come onto our left side, I'm going to switch around. Oh. All right, yogis, hips stacked on top, shoulders stacked on top, lifting through the side waist. We're going to bring the knees or the feet in behind and up. Again, you can hover the legs a little bit, but you're going to really have to squeeze into those abs um, to hold steady. So open the knees, extend that leg, bring it back, still lifting through the abs, you know, through the side waist as we go along here. Extend, put it back together. So again, any pain in your knee just means that the hip is still working on strength, which may very well be true. Uh, so you can just maintain this lift, kind of hug in and hover instead of extending, if you like. Good, so let's do twice more here. When you're completed there, we're gonna stretch, up, stretch out the legs, bring one leg across. That top leg can either be bent or straight. Make sure your hips are still stacked, shoulders are still aligned. Lift that bottom leg, we're gonna pulse it up for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hold it steady, lift oh, up through that side waist. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Put the leg down. Now we're gonna come onto our back. It's not quite Shavasana time. So before we get to Shavasana, we're gonna do one big stretch for the hip flexors. Now, if your hip flexors are super tight, you won't need this little bit of extra. But if you have um, difficulty stretching your <laughs> hip flexors out while you lay on your back, you can put a blanket underneath your hips that'll give you a little bit of a lift. Okay, so one leg is gonna do what is basically a half happy baby. We're gonna reach in there and grab that, either the foot or the ankle. The other leg is the one that's gonna get the hip flexor stretch. So we're, a little bit of elevation is helpful here. It doesn't have to be a lot. But if it feels like you need more, you could put a block under your hips. So we're stretching out, or something just thicker, whatever you got. Stretching out through this leg, trying to let that front part of the hip stretch out. And then this leg, you can hold any way you like. You can hold it with both hands if you like, so you get a little bit more um, happiness for your knee. We're gonna hold this <laughs> for about four or five more breaths, you guys. lunging upside down is what, is what this feels like to me. It's really opening up through the front of that hip. All right, so now I'm gonna take my leg and I'm holding my right foot with my left hand. I'm gonna put my left hand right there on top of my right thigh. I want to keep the foot flex and the toes pointing in the same direction as my knee, just to protect the knee. 
Then we're going to rock it back and forth in a little half up. Rock the baby here. And then bring the other leg in and you might be able to get hold of both of your ankles or you might just hold on to the one leg. side and then oh this is the other this one's my sensitive side <laughs> so I'm going slow into that hip flexor stretch. You can let gravity do most of the work but I like that feeling of lengthening out through the leg trying to give myself one more opportunity to really make some softness happen there. Four more breaths. So again, we're going to hold on, make sure the foot is aligned with the knee here, bring the leg across, do a little, oh, I'll rock the baby. <laughs> and then we're going to pick the back leg up and bring it on in. And again, you might hold both ankles or maybe you just hold onto the one leg. yogis, the good news is it is time for Shavasana. So <laughs> we're going to let go of the legs. I have this blanket under me, so I'm just going to lift my hips up enough to slip it down so it can support my thighs oh, as I stretch my legs all the way out. And then we'll just let ourselves have a few moments here. You may think this pose is not important, but it might be the most important pose as far as your nervous system is concerned because it really gives the whole body a chance to integrate all this information <coughs> that's been coming from the fascia and the muscle tissue back to the brain, mostly the fascia. Um, and it lets the nervous system kind of um, shift into that nice deep uh, relaxation state. <laughs> so <sighs> it's worth it. It's worth hanging out with this pose for a little while. Just try to let yourself give in to gravity, adjust the body so that's comfortable. And breathe nice and smooth. Mostly just let go. Smooth out your face. <laughs> Bring a little more kindness to your eyes. yourself thinking about stuff just let that go for now and come back to the breath we're going to stay for just a little bit longer
yogis, notice your breath again. This time we're going to kind of play with the breath, so we're going to take really deep breaths and try to feel it all the way to the toes. And then with your next breath, stretch yourself out. Relax and wiggle your fingers and toes and do some little spins with your wrist and ankles. Feels like a good idea. Bring your knees in, give yourself a back massage. Then we're gonna come all the way up to a seated position. But you're at your house, so if you wanna stay there, I'm not gonna stop you. <laughs> but we'll say goodbye to each other at least with a little bit of intention. Take a nice big breath. Big sigh. Namaste, yogis. Thank you so much for joining me today.